And we're back in the attic. Today we're gonna do a review on the Fieldpiece SDMN6 on my furnace. Yes, I'm wearing Crocs and I am wearing my PJs. Leave me alone. I was trying to do this in the field, but I ended up working a bunch of heat pumps, so it did happen. Anyway, uh, this is the SDMN6. Um, this thing's pretty cool. A coworker of mine bought it. He's like, yeah, you can borrow it and review it. So I'm borrowing it. He hasn't even used this thing. So it's like brand new. Uh, don't have the box, but it's practically due. So here we go. Alrighty. So we have the actual unit here. It's the field piece SDMN six, right? SDMN six. Yes. I said it right. So this thing is a dual port manometer and pressure switch tester. So this thing's actually pretty cool. Um, I have the SDMN5, just did a review on that so we can see the differences. Um, but yeah, this thing's kind of cool because you can actually test the pressure switch and you can even ohm it out, which is pretty awesome. So it's like a all-in-one thing. So. <clears throat> so it's pretty rugged, it's built just like the other one. It's got the little rubber thing, you take this off and then you got the little battery uh, compartment in the back. It's got a magnet on it which is the, the best thing about these field piece tools. And then it's on like a little strap, so it just makes it so much easier to hang on. You know, you can move it around, whatnot. I don't like the ones that have like, you know, just the, the magnet on the back, so you just have to stick the whole thing, um, which is still cool. But I mean, if it's not a flat spot, you know, forget about it. Anyway, so this is what it comes with out of the bag. It comes with rubber hoses. It comes with two of these things. Um, I already put this together we were looking at it comes with the whoops comes with the, uh, the quick start guide tells you how to use it comes with a little bit of uh, some field piece stuff like buy some more stuff little advertisements and then you have your certification card whoa I'm gonna cover that up so this is a certification card saying that this thing is certified and it works right uh, so it comes with this bag which is pretty nice uh, my old meter bag um, or my old meter came with one of these. Of course, it fell apart and got ripped, so I've replaced it since then, but still nice. Um, so in here, we got the front pocket here. So this is actually, he got the, he got the nice kit. Look at this, it comes with your static pressure uh, ports, and then it's got all the, uh, the you know, the pressure testing uh, things you have to put together. Here's a little rubber thing. Um, and then it's got the little brass ones too. Uh, you got this little, uh, this little rubber hose thing and I think this is for uh, used to test pressure switches that do not have a bleed port so yeah so some pressure switches don't have a bleed port and then what else we got in here Just bear with me I'm trying to do this one-handed so we got these wires this is to test the pressure switch continuity so plug that into the pressure switch plug that into the, the meter so that's pretty cool and then we got some hoses and this is for testing the um, pressure switch stuff so yeah they're folded in half there's not actually like 20,000 of them but yeah so it comes with a little T and some extra hoses for pressure testing or pressure switch testing and I believe that's it yeah that's everything all right cool so anyway we're gonna go ahead and go uh, over all the all the uh, features this guy has and we'll show you how to use them look at that in an attic on an actual unit that's running sort of Yes, I know my system is horrible and ugly. It's an ICP. It's got a freaking spark igniter on it, a spark uh, spark pilot. Which don't, I just don't get it. I don't know why they did that, but whatever. Anyway, uh, here we go. All right, so we're going to go ahead and test our pressure switch. Uh, so this guy has that uh, pressure switch testing option. So this is how you do it. You get your pressure switch. You figure out what your minimum inches of water column is. So this one's a 0.59. Uh, also, you want to verify if it has a bleeder port. This one does, but it's right there. And basically, all that one is is um, it's like a pressure relief valve, so it doesn't uh, you know damage the diaphragm. Uh, and you want to know about whether you know whether it has one or not, just because if it doesn't have one, you got this guy right here, which you can add to your um, what do you call it to your uh, uh, your meter. And basically, it just adds a bleeder port. So I don't know if you can see it, but you see that little thing sticking out there that's that's the bleeder port and it's just to you know so you don't damage the pump or whatnot um but anyway 
Uh, so here's how we do it. So first things first, we want to go ahead and turn it on. Um, as you can see, I got some stuff hooked up here. So this is the uh, continuity wires. You plug that in right in at the top like that. You're going to grab your yellow hoses. And you're going to put one on P1 and one on the pump port. And then you're going to grab this white one with the T and you're going to put hooked up, hook up those two yellow ones to it. All right. Now it's uh, you don't when you turn this on, you don't want to have this connect to the pump yet. Uh, also, you want to verify that there's no moisture, water, or whatever inside this um, pressure switch because the pump will suck it in there and it's not good for it. So uh, verify that, especially if it's 90 percenter. Um, so first things first, we want to turn it on. So we're going to hit the on button, hold it down, and there it goes. Okay, cool. So now we're going to go ahead and hit the zero button, which is this big one here at the bottom. This is going to zero out uh, P1 and P2. All right, cool. So now that we want to do it, we want to do uh, this big button here that says test. So it's going to start up the pump. Um, it's got about a 14 second countdown. Uh, according to the instructions, it says to not have it connected to a pump to just get ambient pressure. So we just have our hose hanging out. So we're going to hit the test button. You're going to hear a noise. That'll be the pump starting up. So here we go. All right, so there's a the countdown. And uh, this little light here blinks. It's indicating that the pump is running. All right, cool. So once that countdown's done, we can go ahead and plug in our pressure switch. And you want to keep the pressure switch in the same um, position that it is in the equipment. So this particular one, it could this is how it was installed, you know, over there, uh, or it could be like that. Now we got about a minute to test this, so we're going to go ahead and hook up this hose to the pressure switch. All right, it is connected. Now if we look here it's showing us our pressure. So this guy is creating a uh, 4.11 inches of water column. So these arrows here are gonna adjust the speed of the pump. So up obviously to speed it up and down to bring it down. So we're gonna decrease it. And what we wanna do is you see this little red button? This tells us we have continuity on our switch, so it's closed. So as we turn this down, we wanna kinda of watch the pressure. And the DEC means it's decreasing. If you turn it up, it says INC, which is increase, and then you can even hold it. So it's going to basically hold, but I'm just going to do it manually. So I'm going to keep turning it down. I want to see at what pressure my switch closes or opens at. Uh, so it's 0.59 inches, so it should be right around there. Now keep in mind, it's never going to be perfect. It could be plus or minus 10% of that. So there we go. So, so 0.64, so close enough. So I would say my pressure switch is working fine. Now to turn off the pump, you're gonna hit test again. And there you go, we tested our pressure switch. We now know that it's opening and closing about in the right spot. So now that we got that done, let's go ahead and test our gas pressure. So we're gonna show you how to test gas pressure using the Fieldpiece SDMN5, I'm sorry, six, six, not the five, the six. Yeah, so pretty much everything else besides that is exactly the same as the SDMN5. Uh, the only difference is you can do this pressure uh, pressure testing thing. So, But we're going to go ahead and test our gas pressure, just to show you how to do it on this particular one. And we're also going to do a static pressure test uh, since it came with static pressure ports. So again, thanks to my buddy for lending me this thing. Um, I'm probably going to end up buying one of these after this uh, video. So uh... Okay, so we're going to go ahead and test our gas pressure. So this particular, there's two types of, uh, of um, pressure ports on these gas valves. You can have the little brass one, which is this guy right here. Uh, and th this, this kit comes with two of each. So it's got two of these. And then you have this one here, uh, which it also has another one. Uh, in I guess in case you lose it. Uh, but basically, usually like you see the, um, the uh, gas ports or the, the gas port for like an ultra low NOx. Usually it's going to use this one, you know, you use like a little Allen wrench and then you slide this over the port. Uh, this particular one's going to use the brass one, which is this one right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and screw that right into there, just like that. Cool. So now we're going to go ahead and grab our meter here. And we're going to go ahead and take the other side of this uh, hose here. And we're going to stick that on P1. So just like that, we put that on P1. All right, we want to go ahead and zero this out. So we hit the big zero button out, and it is zeroed out. We have it on P1. 
So now we're going to go ahead and cycle our furnace. Now we got that all hooked up. Uh, and then we got our adjustment port right here, which is going to be this guy right here. Um, mine's kind of hard to get to, so that's why I got it in there. Anyway, we're going to cycle on our furnace, so here we go. Okay, so we got our brass connection put into our gas valve. And we got our hose attached to P1, so we're going to go ahead and cycle our furnace. So there goes our inducer. Our hot surface igniter comes on, lights the uh, pilot light, and there we go. So that's our gas pressure right there. So this furnace is nominal, it's supposed to be at 3.5, uh, so we're at 3.26, but generally you want this to run for a good, you know, 10 minutes or so to make sure it settles out before you make any adjustments, so we'll be right back. Okay, so our gas pressure is pretty much settled at 1.26, so we're going to go ahead and turn this, uh, go ahead and turn this clockwise turn it up to three and a half. As you can see, I'm just barely turning it. Every little smidge is going to make a big difference. And there we go. Three and a, five, three and a half inches of water column. And it's going to jump around a little bit, which is normal. So you want to get it as close as you can. So we're definitely there. But that's how you test the gas pressure on uh, this bad boy. So let's go ahead and do a static pressure test. Here we go. Alrighty, so we're going to check our static pressure with the uh, uh, manometer here. So we got this guy right here. Uh, this is on our supply. This is our return comes with these handy dandy static pressure tips so pretty much my airflow on this furnace is going that way so you want to put it into the flow like that so it's hitting the tip you know uh, it's got these little arrows and I generally like to run it in air conditioning uh, because that means the fans on its highest setting so that's gonna get your most accurate reading um, and also make sure you have the blower door on because if you don't that's gonna throw everything off so we put this uh, in the return, and we put this right in between the heat exchanger and the evap coil, because we want our static pressure to be, be, you know, between here and here. So, just like the SDMN5, uh, right now this is our supply, so we're at 2.8 inches water column. And if we hit the P1, P2 button, it'll switch it over to P2. This is our return, we're at 2.4, so it totals it out for us at uh, 5.2, 5.3. So this furnace calls for 0.5 inches, so we're right at the max. Um, it's gonna never be perfect, but that's pretty close, so I'm not too worried. I'm actually quite surprised that it's that close. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much how you, my light strobing again. So that's pretty much how you uh, test the static pressure on the SDMN6 uh, by field piece. So it's a dual port manometer and pressure switch tester. So pretty cool, pretty cool. I uh, might be upgrading to one myself. But again, thanks for watching, guys. Uh, just this week we hit 100 subscribers, so uh, make sure you check out our new URL, which is going to be www.youtube.com slash NighthawkHVAC. So thank you so much for all your support. We really appreciate it. And um, make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell notification. And, uh, you know, tell me what a horrible technician I am. And we'll see you on the next one.